Donc, euh, <coughs> Rudolf Schwint est euh, professeur euh, à l'université de Bâle. Il euh, appartient au Digital Humanities Lab euh, de cette université. Euh, il a été depuis euh, 1980 jusqu'en euh, 2001, euh, directeur du euh, Scientific Photography Lab à la même université et euh, où il avait travaillé en particulier sur euh, euh, la, les reconstitutions des couleurs euh, des euh, photographies et des films euh, avec le, la fin de, des photographies argentiques euh, il s'est euh, réorienté vers euh, la digitalisation l'informatisation des, des, euh, des photos et donc il va nous parler donc, du euh, projet du, euh, du produit monolithe euh, que je vais lui laisser donc nous euh, expliquer. Merci pour l'introduction et j'aimerais aussi remercier Bertrand Lavedrine pour euh, que je peux raconter sur cette thématique. Et je peux aussi le remercier, comme j'ai pu faire un sabbatical euh, à son institut il y a deux ans. Et j'avais aussi le plaisir d'être euh, à l'époque dans la, le comité de thèse. <rire> On sait maintenant aussi plus que 20 ans. Well, uh, I prepared my speech in English. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I like to talk about uh, monolith that looks like this. It's only a sheet of photographic film. This is a solution for long-term preservation of digital data. Its development started almost eight years ago at the university in our lab. and. Um, The product grew out of the research state and now it is introduced already in the market since uh, about five years. In the last five years we had a lot of lessons learned regarding what customers expect of such a storage solution. In my presentation I will take about these lessons. You will see that resolution, for example, was an, an issue at the beginning, uh, but data, savvy, uh, data safety is very well. We all know about analog. That means material-based objects, how they must be archived. Photography, as an example, decay. If the storage conditions are good, the decay is slow, it's, it's never zero. If it's warm and humid, decay is faster. In fact, the best recommendation is store cool, dry, dark and don't touch it. On the other hand, digital information behaves completely different. Digital data have a completely different decay curve. It is only important that the digital information can be read. In other words, the information is either readable uh, and at a given moment, or it is no longer readable. Thus disappeared. You reach the so-called digital cliff. There are a lot of possible causes for the disappearance. The data carrier is defective, for example, because of aging or wear. There are no more devices, the hardware is missing. There is no more software and very often incorrect operation, that means human error and you lost your data. The importance of the various points is very different in practice. It is usually non-existent hardware or operator errors when the data disappears. The digital object you want to keep, maybe a text document, an image, something that you look normally on the computer screen or you print it out. A digital object is a file in a certain file format that must be rendered by software to become finally human readable. It is defined by a series of bits This is what the archivist wants and what we think we keep. But the bits is a logical compo uh, the, the bit stream is a logical concept. The information is kept on a data carrier. And these are analog physical uh, marks on a physical medium, e.g. magnetic marks on a hard disk, on a CD-ROM, 
or the magnetic tape or whatever you have. And this is finally what is kept in a digital archive. Now we can regard digital archiving as a communication process with the future. The information is encoded to its logical representation and the corresponding bit stream is written to the data carrier as analog marks. After a certain time, we have to reverse the process to get again the information. The problem of digital archiving is the relatively short lifespans. We have three parts. The storage medium with a life expectancy of, for example, optical disk, magnetic tapes, hard drives, this is in the order of five, perhaps ten years. Then we need an access hardware. Here is the main problem. Uh, here the main problem is the technological obsolescence or discontinued technologies. That means a newer and better technology will replace the old product and the new technology is no longer able to read the old data carrier. The time span is much shorter, it's about five years. And finally, software formats change too and get obsolete. Here you shall see a small collections of data carriers in our lab over the last 40 years. In a few words, digital archiving means migration. You have and you must copy your digital objects over and over and over again. If you wait too long in between, you may lose your information. And this is what it makes it really expensive. So Jeff Rotenberg did quote the problem some years ago, digital information lasts forever or five years, whichever comes first. So what can we do? Digital archiving means periodical migration. Now one way to eliminate errors is to look for a me mechanism of automatic migration. I don't want about to speak to that. Or we eliminate the migration. Is this possible? Now, if we remember the three problems of digital archiving, a migrationless archiving system needs a stable storage medium, a stable read-back or access technology, and a stable code, or a stable software. Then we hope to be able to copy as seldom as possible or even never. Think now you are 100 years in the future. The question is, what do we have to do that we can read and inter interpret the digital information in 100 years? Now, what, what means digital data in the computer world? In the computer world, we always think of bits. That means of a binary code. But in a more general way, Digital data is anything recorded in a code based on a limited set of symbols. That means our alphabet is also a digital code and text on paper means digital archiving. For thousands of years information has been preserved in a network of digital archives. These are our libraries. The basic technologies of these archives are languages, paper, ink, and the organizational workflow. Libraries are successful digital archives. They have preserved information for several thousand of years. A comparison with the digital archiving shows we have paper as a cheap and stable storage medium, the software format is a language, Greek, Latin, English, and so on. These all can be regarded as long-lasting formats. And one of the most important points, we have no interface problem. 
We can read the text with our eyes. Text on paper is a visual medium. We don't need a machine. The image-based approach for archiving gives an interesting between the analog world and the IT world. We have stable data carriers. In analog paper, papyrus, in computer technology, there's something like punched paper tape, photographic material, and so on. With standardized and open file formats, we have we know how to decode. And last, the recovery is not affected by change of technology. A digital camera certainly will be available in the future. Now the demands on the visual medium. Photographic film is in principle the best data carrier for such an image-based approach for a migration-less archiving. It is well-known stable and long-living medium. Due to its high resolution, we should achieve also high data density. You can process it in large quantities and it is accepted by archivists. It is available, well, that is another question. It was available. This point will be discussed later. That means photographic film or more specific microfilm. And now what is monolith? Well, in brief, it is a workflow for a migration-less preservation of any digital data. A PDF, a TIFF, JPEG, MP3, video or whatever you want on a visual medium. Not only an optical, but a visual medium. It combines the permanence and visual nature of photographic material and the strengths of digital image technology. The binary information is stored as a bit pattern in two-dimensional barcode, either on one or multiple film layers, that means on color film. The machine-readable code is enriched by human-readable metadata in order to describe the archived object. It also provides detailed description of how to recover the original film. The unread strength of monolith is that digital data can be preserved without periodic migration. Migration can be omitted if the storage media fulfills the following requirements. It must contain human-readable metadata in order to describe the, arch the archived objects. It must have the information on how to recover the original files. This is an important part of the metadata. This knowledge is the key to interpret the archived byte stream. And the digital data itself is stored in a hardware-independent way as far as possible. Thus it, is, thus, it is not affected by the change of technology. Now you may ask, who is using Monolith? What I'm going to present you are two early adopters which helped to us to improve the, uh, this material. The first use of Monolith was proposed by Xenophile Media in Toronto and Greenpeace. They launched a project called Love Letters to the Future around 2009 World Climate Summit in Copenhagen. They had the idea to record messages, text, image and video for our future generations. That means people living in 2109. The message were sealed into a container they called time capsule, as the image left. This was buried somewhere around Copenhagen. It will be recovered and opened hopefully in 100 years. We encoded the videos, the videos in OCK video format. This is an open format very well known to the open source community. But most important, the complete documentation 
can download it at no cost. Short after the project, there were another one launched and is still going on. The State Archives of the Canton of Zurich have the lead. They have a collection of around 20,500 historical maps. This stock is preserved by digitizing the asset and preserving the binary data on monolith digital objects. As you can see here, there is also a high-resolution analog image, that's the classical microfilm application, on the fishes, which serves as an ultimate backup. Let us look at the project of the State Archives of Zurich. They digitized the ancient maps into the JPEG 2000 image files. This format was chosen because it allows for a high compression rate with minimal or no loss of quality. The representation information clearly needs to describe the JPEG 2000 image file format. But it also has to describe the original physical object, the map. The challenge is to define what will be relevant information worth preserving. In this particular case, the data notes that is a map of the ancient Zurich drawn on paper with the flags of the quarters, its scale, the creation date and the author and the digitization date. Of course, this set of metadata was defined specifically for those assets. If there were audio file to archive, a set world look differently. Monolith would easily allow for that. We first thought they may be skeptical about using it for the preservation of the digital assets. Also, they would see that the preservation is migration-less. They may feel uneasy with the optical character of the medium. Storing digital data on film takes it out of its native digital environment and it will take the additional step of digitization in order to access it. But this was not the case. The archivists were used to handle microfilm and had an infrastructure up and running. They welcomed the idea of using it for the archiving process of digital data. Thus the main challenges left were to define an archiving container with a layout and content that is accepted by the archivists. Once we had defined the, lay the layout, we saw that we will end up with quite a complex structure of both the workflow and the digital object. And last but not least, we had to collect, very, verify and assemble all the documentation that is needed in order to recover the encoded data. Well, the Senate of Kodak stocks was only 15 years ago. And we can ask, why still use photographic film? It is a well-known archival medium. Film, especially the low-tech black and white one, is stable and this will be probably even be available in future. The future of color film, however, is very uncertain. But Monolith doesn't need, in principle, color film to store digital color images or sound or text. You even don't need a specific type of film, size, dice, price, perforation. You could also use other visual media than photographic material, for example, diazofilm or even inkjet printing. We believe that monolith has become a good means for long-term preservation of digital data because it overcomes one of the main problem, the periodical migration. The lessons learned helped us to achieve this goal. The layout of the data object ensures that no migration is needed. The detailed and freely available documentation will help recovering and interpreting the encoded byte stream. This way the information will become accessible and usable. But the the big problem is, do we have photographic film in future? We have a method 
We can always read it back, but we don't know if we can produce it for a long time in the future, if this material will disappear. Nevertheless, thank you for your interest. Merci beaucoup, Rudolf, pour ce, cet exposé. La même question, y a-t-il des questions En face de moi. Je vais la poser en, en français. Mmh. Euh, J'ai juste une question parce que je ne connais pas bien le, le fonctionnement, mais si par hasard une partie devait être manquante, est-ce qu'il est quand même possible de lire l'information ou, ou de quand même retirer une, une partie de l'information de, de ce monolithe euh, Au fond, il y a deux parties. L'idée est celle du microfilm ou du, du, du film photographique qui est, qui est au fond visuel. Alors tout ce qui est fait pour l'humain, on le met dans la forme classique, on fait des images comme images, de texte comme texte, on fait toutes les descriptions, on peut le lire. Et pour tout ce qui concerne la partie ordinateur, on fait en forme des, de ce bit pattern, euh, en forme binaire, qui est... Euh, lisible retour par une, une, une caméra normale, une caméra digitale normale, c'est ça l'avantage, il ne faut pas un appareil spécial. Et la description, comment on doit relire ça, de nouveau transformer en, dans un fichier PDF ou, ou, ou qu'est-ce que c'est, euh, est aussi stocké sur le, sur le même matériel. Alors il y a l'information visuelle pour l'humain, il y a l'information de l'objet numérique et à l'information de tout le décodage de ce, de ce produit. Il y a une autre question Oui. Je me demandais juste sur la capacité. Je veux dire, je suppose que c'est pour des objets de valeur haute où ce n'est pas trop grand. Non, vous avez raison. Donc, qu'est-ce qui est un standard de microfiche pour des objets de valeur haute C'est sur 20 mégabytes. 20 mégabytes. 20 mégabytes. Ce n'est pas beaucoup. Vous avez raison. Mais vous devez garantir que vous pouvez le lire de nouveau. Bien sûr, vous pouvez aller plus haut. Le matériel en lui-même a une capacité plus haute. Mais puis vous avez des problèmes pour lire de nouveau. Parce que la machine de l'économie va être très chère. Et c'est en fait un problème de tout le problème de l'économie digital archiving. Imagine you have to build a, a, CD, a CD reader, which costs now $20, $30 if you don't have one. How much this will cost to build one? This would be millions. That is the problem. And the idea was here, as long as we, have, we will have computer, there will also be digital cameras, because we, we want this. This is, is something that's a base technology. But we have to, to, to put the information density not too high, otherwise it will be too complicated to read it back. And a follow-up then to that. Have you done a business model in terms of assuming a certain cost of migration, migration every 10 years? How many hundred years do you think your system, um, even at quite low density, will yeah. pay back? It is, um, there are two cases where, where which are, no, there are several cases where it could be interesting. The one is the, the cultural heritage. They want to keep it as, really as an assurance. If, if all fails, then they have it. Then you have the case where digital assets must be stored by law for 30 years. And you know you, you never will use it, but you have to do it. And why store it and migrate and migrate and migrate? And migration is quite expensive if it is really done in a, in a professional and really sure way. Uh, and uh, also for, for single way. And I think it's about uh, the order of 20 years. The order of when you have to keep something 20 years or 25 years, you will have to break even. 
So for short-term archiving, 10 years, you don't need you to make this in the classical way. But if you have to keep it uh, for a long time, or you can make one set in this and the other in, a, in the normal way by migration, but in a less uh, professional way, you only have perhaps two copies uh, and not three on, on the same place and so on. So you, you, your normal migration way is cheaper. Just a little question. Thank you for your presentation. Simplement, I haven't followed well if the system, your support, could accept the sound and the audiovisual. Oui. Et là, j'ai peut-être pas bien ah. compris le traitement numérique antérieur. Oui. Alors, au fond, qu'est-ce qu'on fait on, 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 met, on met tout ce qu'on veut sur l'ordinateur. Et là, sur l'ordinateur, c'est une série finalement des bits. Alors, si c'est du son, c'est du MP3, par exemple. Si c'est des images, c'est un JPEG ou un TIFF. Si c'est du texte, c'est un PDF. Si, euh, qu'est-ce que vous voulez Et au fond... On, on, on met cette série de, de, de 0 et 1, on le met comme une, 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 une casier d'échecs euh, sur, sur le film. C'est des, des, des petits points noir et blanc, vous pouvez, je peux vous montrer. Et, et on peut tout stocker. C'est comme une CD ou une, 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 une stick. Vous mettez tout ce qu'il y a dans l'ordinateur sur, sur ce support. Mais comme c'est un support visuel, vous pouvez naturellement mettre aussi les informations qui sont directement visuelles comme un texte ou une image en cette forme. Naturellement, un, 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 quelque chose comme, comme du son, c'est seulement possible en, en, en forme numérique. C'est un, un produit de stockage numérique, comme, comme une CD, comme une... Alors on peut tout mettre dessus. Il y a une question là. J'aimerais reformuler ma question. Euh, si la partie qui est faite de bits est lacunaire, ça veut dire que si la partie, par exemple, qui explique comment euh, fonctionne, enfin comment lire ces bits oui. n'est plus sur, la, sur le monolithe, est-ce qu'il y a oui. une possibilité de perdre toute l'information ou il y a quand même une information qui peut être euh, retrouvée et, et relue vous pouvez mettre qu'est-ce que vous voulez. Au fond, imaginez, c'est du microfilm. Alors vous mettez sur le microfilm qu'est-ce que vous voulez. Vous mettez, vous pensez une partie à l'époque. Oui, c'est pas ça. Je si je, pens, je pensais par exemple que dans quelques années, s'il y, y a un dommage sur ces, sur ces fiches qui ah. arrivent, une partie oui. qui a été grattée par exemple, oui. ou bien ah, qui, oui, oui. qui est tachée, est-ce qu'on perd toute oui. l'information et où est-ce qu'on oui. arrive à retrouver Pardon, ça, c est, c est oui. ça. Non, naturellement, euh, le, il y a une, 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 une très forte correction d'erreur euh, dans les fichiers. Ça, c'est fait. Il, il faut compter avec euh, des, des, des fautes de production. Ensuite, les, le film n'est jamais homogène. Mais ça, c'est quelque chose qui est absolument partout dans le monde numérique. The error correction. Sans ça, rien ne veut marcher. Alors, même ici, il y a une, 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 une des méthodes qui est utilisée partout. Euh, euh, par exemple, si, si on a 100 bits, on écrit au fond 130, qui sont comme, comme pour, pour une, une correction d'erreur. Alors, et le deuxième, c'est on ne met pas le bit un après l'autre. Parce que s'il y a une faute, comme une, une crature, euh, on les distribue par, euh, par, une, une, euh, par, par un euh, random generator. Euh, c'est par hasard. Alors on commence un bit là, l'autre là, là, là. Alors c'est des techniques qui sont utilisées euh, euh, dans l'informatique. C'est bien normal euh, et on les utilise aussi. Là, ça, c'est naturellement important. Et il faut compter avec, avec euh, qu'il qu y a des pertes. Mais c est, c est, c'est du film, il, il, il va se détruire avec le temps. Il va, par exemple, si c'est couleur, les, les colorants vont va disparaître. Si c'est noir et blanc, il peut y avoir des tâches, euh, des tâches euh, de, de sulfuration, etc. Euh, et il faut compter avec ça. Est-ce qu'il y a 
a d'autres questions Oui, il y en a une là. Uh, a question earlier was the storage density. And I'm a service provider located in Switzerland using this technology. Uh, I can give you a, a, an insight in, in, in practical use of this. Um, if you have an hour of film in a 2K resolution, uh, you would, in an analog way, use three reels mm -hmm. of 600 meters to uh, archive this yeah. film production onto analog 35 millimeter film. The same film in 2K you could place on two reels with, uh, by using this uh, method of monolith. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2K using as a submission information package, uh, digital cinema package uh, using the uh, JPEG 2000 movie compression. It's the same amount. If you need, if you make images, or you make digitized images in a compressed form, it needs the same amount of 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 film. That means if you have one hour, you have three reels. You also have three reels, either digital or in, in, in the other way. But you must, of course, uh, compress your images uh, by, uh, for example, the digital cinema package. But you also have to think that when you expose an image on film and you scan it back, that's the same artifact you have. You have an analog lossy compression you never will get back the same amount uh, of quality uh, when, you, when, when you scan back a, a film, um, an image on, 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 on photographic film. You lose information, and it's quite a lot. You lose quite a lot of information. It's about the same. So it's the same amount. 